What's up, man? And now our continuing series on 50 Years of MASH. Looking back at one of the greatest television series of all time. Episode 12 from Season 1, entitled Dear Dad. Now, this would have been the 13th episode that they produced, but the 12th in the running order. Another episode written by showrunner Larry Gelbart. Christmas episode, and be one of many where we'll see our main cast members riding home. Of course, over the run of the series, only Frank, Houlihan, and Colonel Blake will not have episodes that feature this style of storytelling. Again, they're really dialing it in. Feature a lot of announcements from the PA system. Now, in the movie MASH, a lot of the announcements from the PA system were actual notes from the studio given to the film producers. So if you ever give that a look back and listen to those. Bit of a continuity error here in the first season every now and then. Uh, Hawkeye's really not sure where he's from. He says that he's writing to his dad in Vermont. Of course, later on, we'll firmly have Hawkeye's hometown as being Crab Apple Cove. I talked about it before that um, one of my favorite things about MASH was the weaving of different plot lines in. Again, we'll have two or three, four different stories going on in a single episode, and that's something we've been missing here in the early parts of season one. It was actually Larry Gelbart's wife, Patricia, that pushed him to let us know what's going on with a lot of the other members of the camp. Surely there's something else going on, she said. And she was right. I love it so much. So this will be something we'll see moving forward. More than one storyline. All right, so all the hoopla out of the way, let's get into it. 50 Years of MASH, Season 1, Episode 12, Dear Dad. Don't forget all those YouTube things. You can help your brother out by hitting the like button, comment, hit the subscribe button. I do appreciate that. Hope you're having a safe and happy holiday season as we about to hit Thanksgiving 2022. Hope you and your family are safe, happy, and healthy. Ah. Dear Dad, a lull. At last, after almost three straight days of meatball surgery. 70 hours of sewing kids together. If this keeps up, I was thinking of asking the Army for a raise. Either that or putting on some lipstick and earrings and getting a discharge. If war was hell in Sherman's day, you can imagine what it is now. The tension in the OR is always a foot thick. But we do our best to cut through. If jokes seem sacrilegious in an operating room, I promise you they're a necessary defense against what we get down here at this end of the draft board. Colonel Blake needs your help. You ever thought of leaving her behind to science? Henry Blake's a good doctor and a pretty good Joe. As a commanding officer, well, it's a bit like being on a sinking liner, running to the bridge and finding out the captain is Daffy Duck. <laughs> but more about old Henry later. Christmas here in Korea, as with you in Vermont, is soon upon us. Of course, later on in the series, apparently, um, the writers would punish the, the cast if they started the giving them too much shit, hours. and they'd make them film a the winter episode on during the summer. Schedule is uh, Father Mulcahy solo. I'm confessing that I love you. Still, there is some effort to celebrate the idea of peace on Earth, even though there's shooting in them our hills. How far had Radar O'Reilly gotten in my last letter to you? I think, if I'm not mistaken, he had mailed the back seats by then. This week, he's smuggling out the front seats. It took Trapper and me a while to figure out what he was up to, until we did a fluoroscope of one of his packages, and found out he was mailing a Jeep home, piece by piece. What's in the box? Uh, toys for the orphan, sir. Oh, let me give you a hand. Uh, would you please, sir? <laughs> Radar's not the first guy to do this, of course. It's an old army bit. I wouldn't be surprised if one of George Washington's soldiers hadn't mailed home a horse one piece at a time. Come to the mess tent with me, Dan. And I'll buy you a cup of coffee. Due to the 
the number of people bored last Sunday. Next Sunday will be canceled. Hi, Radar. Hi. <laughs> Looking good, Red. Wait till it's finished. Eight o'clock tonight, right? Make it nine. No sweat. I'll be ready. That'll make two of us. There are certain rules in this man's army that are carried over from the year one. Thanks to these regulations, all of us know precisely what to do in case we're ever attacked by the French or the Indians. One of the more ridiculous customs is the monthly lecture. Uh, this month's topic is, uh, Harold Six and the family. Louder, Henry. Uh, and the family. The first part. Marital sex. <clears throat> sex. Uh, <clears throat> let's hear it for this month's topic. <laughs> uh, just hold it down, okay? It's not actually necessary that any of you officers be present. Only the enlisted personnel are required to attend. Well, Radar, would you charts, cover sir. the charts? On your point, sir. Thank you. Oh, Thank you. Good luck, sir. Right. The uh, union of uh, figure A, man, and uh, figure B, uh, the uh, woman. <laughs> uh, sir, mm -hmm. uh, what happens in the event that uh, figure A is attracted to figure B and wants to get married, but Figure A is already married to, say, figure C, and figure B is engaged to figure D. But figure A can't keep his hands off of figure B because she's got such a great figure. Uh -huh. Well, according to the Army, he's got to forget her. That figures. Dismissed. 10 o'clock tonight? Make it 11. Right. The following men have volunteered for this afternoon's 10-mile physical fitness hike. To bring you up to date on my co-pilot, Trapper, as I wrote you earlier, he's developed a thriving, very lucrative private practice on the side over here. He helped with a difficult delivery that added one more precious life to the village, a bouncing baby veal for which service the doctor received one gallon of mother's milk. Father Mulcahy is stringing popcorn all over the place in an attempt to give this cesspool a yuletide look. He's a terrific guy, our priest, but I never tell him because I don't want to foul up his humility. I can tell you this, I don't envy him this parish. At least I didn't last Wednesday. Corporal Clinger. Clinger? Sir? Where did you get that? Nurse McCarthy gave it to me, sir. I'm talking about that bandana. Oh, that's my good luck. My mom gave me this when I shipped out. Well, take it off. Oh, sir. I want that bandana. I had my ma send you one. Soldier, you're out of uniform. Sir, the nurse said to get these right to the lab. A nurse said? You're placing me under a nurse? You said it. I didn't. Stop! You see what you did? Oh, me. Fellas, fellas. What, are you crazy? No, wait. Go. Oh. Oh. I got just one ham on his ass. I don't know if you've learned from Father McKay's a boxer yet or not. <clears throat> he didn't take that punch very good. Oh, neither did Frank. What are you crazy? Go on, scram! Scram! Get out of here! What's going on, Father? Shh, shh, shh. He's exhausted. Okay. Where's the guy that exhausted him? <laughs> Let me take care of it. Please? I'm not even Catholic. Would you like to be? William Christopher and Jamie Farr. I love the entire cast, but man, these two. Nice to you, Carl. Thank you. Thank 
Corporal Slinger? Not now, Father. I gotta see the Major. Is that a grenade? That's what it is, Father. Well, why a grenade? I thought I'd stick it in the Major's ear and find out. Give it to me. Don't touch me, or you're gonna be a lot of little priests. Clinger, he broke the box. The nurse wanted them in the lab. I can't take this off. Something will happen to me. Clinger, stop. Another step, and I'll take us both up. He's tired. We're all tired. You tired too? I can't get to sleep. Unless I count sacrificial sheep. Give me the grenade. Please. Can I keep my bandana? I guarantee it. It's from my mind, you know. She said never take it off. No reason why you should. <laughs> None at all. <laughs> Later episode, she'll ship him her slip. Same deal. Attention all personnel. When filling out GI insurance forms, be sure to state your age and sex at the time of your last birthday. As I've written you, Frank Burns and Hot Lips have been an item over here ever since they both laid their beady little eyes on each other. They think no one's wise, but the only one over here who doesn't know about their romance is General MacArthur's pipe stuffer. Frank plays it very cool at all times. Uh, going out tonight, Frank? Just to stretch my legs. Uh, what's that? It's French. Oh, no wonder you smell like a snail. Ha uh ha. -huh. What neither Frank nor Hot Lips knows is that earlier in the afternoon, while they were off picking berries or whatever, Trapper and I stopped by her tent. <laughs> Frank, we've got ours. That's right. Let the others get theirs. Uh, to go, Frank. Ours to go. Oh, of course. <laughs> in the pillow. I'll get them all. Each and every day. There's a damn candle burning in there still. Good night, Trapper. Good night, Hawkeye. A reminder that the 4077th Christmas party for the Korean children in the area will be held today at 1400 hours. So everyone turn out to meet the kids. Santa will be there too. We can only hope he's sober. Don't look like it. Excuse me, sirs. Can you hold this, please? Christmas present. If you'd like, I could do it into a stocking. Are oh, you? You are a moral degenerate. You Me, a yet. moral degenerate? Santa Claus? <laughs> Margaret, are, are you all right? I'm fine, Frank. Fine. Oh, the man's a beast, an animal. Yeah, every bit of him. Damn it, radar. You realize if my father sees this, you'll have to marry me. I wouldn't marry you for five dollars. How's our house? Standing room only. Great. There's an infantry squad pinned down on Hill 28, 20 miles up. They're caught in heavy crossfire. Their corporal's been hit bad and needs cutting proud if he's going to make it. How do I get there? Chap is waiting. Here you go, Santa. Wait a minute, I'll go. No, it's a chest wound. It better be Pierce. There's an extra nurse on the bottom. Save it for me. You, you betcha. Hey. If I don't see you, Merry Christmas. Tell me when you see me. 
It is the day before Christmas, Dad, and I'd much rather be in the house. Just too many creatures stirring around here for my comfort. Frankly, the last thing I figured when I went to med school was winding up flying into battle dressed as Kris Kringle. But then all those kids down there are in the last place they ever figured. Holy cow! And you said there was no Santa Claus, huh? P.S. Dad, I almost forgot to wish you Merry Christmas from everyone at MASH. Trapper McIntyre. Henry Blake. Even Frank Burns. Hot Lips Houlihan. Future used car dealer, Radar O'Reilly. Ginger Bayless. Father Mulcahy. Corporal Klinger. All the ladies of the ensemble. And of course me, your loving son and unsuccessful draft dodger, Hawkeye. Wow. Not a lot of laughs in that episode. But man, I love it so much. The music. Again, all the stories a lot woven in. Of the iconic shot of Santa coming down. Coming to Helen Choppy. There it is. Episode 12. MASH. Dear Dad. I love it. Again, I, we, we've, we've, we've turned the, we've turned the corner. That first half of season one is the most, I guess, out of place, if you will, from the rest of the season. So, again, we got 256 episodes of this television series and we've, we've now seen 12 of them. Wow. A lot of heart, a lot of heart. Again, it's the Larry Gelbart. Again, just a fantastic writer. Knew, you know, what he wanted out of this show. So let's flash forward a year. Welcome back. Um, for some reason, I had not finished the last bit of this video. So I'm just going to just finish it off here. Great episode. Like I said, we... Got to see some of our secondary characters come to the fore. Certainly a great scene between Jamie Farr and William Christopher. As I stated, I just love their dynamic. Certainly it grows throughout the years. Also, this Christmas episode didn't air uh, on Christmas or near Christmas. It was actually the week before. And our next episode, Edwina, will be the one that aired on Christmas Eve, 1972. I don't know how they screwed that timing up, but there you go. All right. So again, a year since we recorded that video, and we're getting ready to do Edwina, which is episode 13 coming up. So stand by for that. And as always, that's what's up, man.